Oh, it works again. Hello, everyone. It's so cool that it works uh, from the first attempt this time. So my name is Anton Babenka. I'm going to entertain you uh, talking about Terraform and a lot of things going on right now. So uh, uh, first of all, um, you can follow uh, this event on uh, different platforms right now, uh, like YouTube, where I stream by default. And then I'm slowly discovering how Twitch work. It's just crazy platform. It seems to be uh, nicely implemented for gamers, but has, have no notion about uh, software development or Terraform or DevOps. So I found very few people who are doing this there. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, YouTube, Twitch, um, um, well, what else? Uh, Periscope, if you're using Twitter, uh, which is also a pretty nice way of interacting with people. Anyway, uh, thanks again for joining and for finding time. I know that it's not best time for people in US, so I'm thinking about having uh, some streams uh, later, uh, which will be suitable for people in the uh, Pacific uh, zone. Okay, so uh, the schedule for today is, uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, before talking about schedule, I, I simply cannot skip this, guys. So M0 is uh, sponsoring this uh, live stream. And uh, if you are interested in uh, having self-service cloud environments where you, let's say, spin up your infrastructure from predefined um, templates written in Terraform, and uh, you have few people or few uh, organizations, I would say, uh, within your company uh, who wants to uh, have control uh, over policies, uh, over different... Um, uh, uh, different security uh, governments, uh, governance rules, uh, then M0 can uh, let you do this. So you spin up your platform, your templates, and then uh, there are a bunch of different policies which you can uh, attach, and then you can see uh, cost estimation and actually cost reporting on hourly basis, which uh, is pretty cool, I think. So if you are interested uh, in uh, giving a try, please go to m0.com and then slash Anton, okay? This is one way to do this. Okay, so other things which I want to talk today uh, are actually uh, uh, related to Terragrant because Terragrant was definitely the big thing which people asked many times and many people wanted to know what's, uh, what's going to happen uh, with, uh, with Terragrant, whether they need it uh, and, and how to use it. I will probably start uh, with part one. I have no clue how many parts I will be able to uh, make for Terragrant uh, because this is very big, uh, very, very big topic and very big tool and uh, amount of knowledge which, uh, which you can get is just insane. Uh, I will, as usually, talk about uh, why this is needed, uh, where it's good, and I will talk a lot about why it is bad. Okay, I, I really like to give uh, uh, not one side view, uh, even if I am do using Terragrant significantly for the last many years, I have a lot of customers using Terragrant and I'm happily using it. I still can talk about it uh, from negative point of view or why it is bad. Hopefully, uh, some of you will listen to this and will uh, actually start thinking critically and then you will be able to come up with better solutions at the end of the day. Uh, uh, well, 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 uh, we are starting about uh, this already. Uh, Terragrant is a simple wrapper. Oh, yeah, of course, Victor. Uh, this is how many people uh, tend to think about it. But uh, let's talk about uh, some things uh, first. Okay, so first of all, uh, what's new in Terraform world? A uh, bunch of different upcoming events and uh, uh, as some of you uh, remember last time I talked about GitHub Actions for Terraform AWS modules, uh, I will try to uh, give a couple more sentences about what exactly is going on. And uh, there will be Q&A and uh, after all of this there will be Zoom after party. So I will go to, uh, to YouTube. Uh, right now, just this is the easiest way for me to uh, to interact with you guys right now. So if you have any questions, please use link uh, app.slider, uh, which is in description, and uh, then there will be link to uh, to Zoom after party. Uh, 
which we will uh, quite obviously make after party. So I will paste link here. Uh, you can join there now, but uh, it, it will be empty. Okay, uh, and uh, another link which I want to share with you guys. Well, no, that's that's all. Let, let's get started with this one. So uh, join this link uh, when you have um, when you have time, um, and uh, we'll go there after this. Okay, so I go back to the schedule. So the first part in uh, today's schedule is what's new in Terraform world. Um, let's see what's new in Terraform world. I have a large list of uh, notes here. Uh, for today, so I will try to uh, to show them one by one and actually go through them. Okay, so uh, what's new? Mm, okay, let's start with uh, this thing here. Uh, well, 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 where is it? Here is it. Uh, go here. Okay, so first blog post which uh, I think is pretty interesting is when people uh, use Telegram. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> I already start talking about Telegram. When people use Terraform and uh, they know that there is product by HashiCorp, which is called Vault, because it's supposed to help them with some sort of secrets. Well, yes, uh, you can now learn uh, how to you can now learn how to inject secrets into HashiCorp uh, Terraform configuration using Vault, and I think this is uh, quite interesting to uh, see how how it is actually possible to do. Uh, as usually, uh, the content creator team uh, at HashiCorp are doing pretty great job by uh, making this uh, as easy as possible for people to understand. So you can see nice diagrams, uh, some uh, lists and some warnings, uh, which is usually very interesting to, uh, to read because this is exactly where the challenging part will be or some difficulties uh, you will probably stumble upon. So you can read about this here, some animation, how to do this, which is pretty cool. Well, I wish uh, they highlight a little bit more, well, the section for considerations. I'm quite sure that this will be the most highlighted sections because it, it is not so straightforward as it may seem. Uh, yeah, and summary, congratulations, you have successfully, blah, 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 great. But then again, there should be a little bit more warnings that it's not so easy to do. Okay, I leave this to you and to decide whether uh, it makes sense for your setup and how you will actually use it. I'm just going to have to show you that uh, this is what uh, uh, available, what has been published, and uh, I, I, I think it makes perfect sense to go through this. Another piece of information which has been released recently uh, was uh, new HashiCorp Terraform modules for Console, Nomad, and Vault. Well, the key part here is that when you, when you look into this one, and you may think like, wow, 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 that's so cool. No, this is a highlighted word. This is starter modules. Well, it is, to my opinion, it is starter modules uh, in terms of uh, getting something out of the door. I kind of disagree that this is going to be uh, transitioned to production phase or to be usable on any scale because a lot of things are not respected in this code. More specifically is that there are no usage of modules in it, everything. A lot of things are just uh, too much hard-coded. And uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say this as a, a great example of how these things can be done. Well, they can be done this way, but uh, I don't think they should be done this way. Okay, so that's uh, my main uh, objection. I looked into source code, of course, and uh, I, I was following them and just trying to figure out uh, why they did this way? And, well, for me, it's a little bit um, uh, it's a little bit uh, strange that they implemented this way. And they also say that uh, uh, this is starter uh, module. Uh, well, okay, if this is starter, then there are more, let's say, production ready modules, right? So if I go to uh, to production ready or more advanced modules. I can see that, oh my god, 19,000 people uh, used Vault AWS module. Well, uh, when I look in this source code, which is uh, this uh, structure uh, introduced by Grantworks, uh, and when I talk to real customers who are using uh, 
uh, these products like who are spinning up Vault, Console or Nomad using uh, Terraform, pretty much none of them are actually using this module. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you are using this module or, or this kind of modules and you think that uh, this is easy approach or right approach and you understand what's going on here, uh, I was not able to, uh, to find anyone who is using this module. So 19,000 users uh, spinning up Vault on AWS. Well, honestly, this is very, very little, uh, taking into account that this module has started three years ago. So uh, I don't know why this is uh, uh, pointed as, uh, like, uh, as, as official way of uh, spinning up Terraform modules. I saw in private a uh, few other modules for spinning up Vault on AWS, which were much more advanced and much cleaner structure. Anyway, uh, I don't want to say uh, so many bad things just now, because there will be a lot of bad things uh, which I will say later. Well, they're not bad, of course, but they're just opinions. Okay, so you are here to listen opinions and just to uh, you may agree, you may disagree. There is common field. Uh, common field is uh, near the subscribe button. If you accidentally click subscribe button, that's okay. Um, another thing which has happened uh, recently. Well, this was released of Terraform 0.13.4. Uh, nothing really uh, shaking or uh, crazy or which most people have to worry about except this thing. So if you've been using third-party provisioners like Habitat, Puppet, Chef, Salt Masterless, they're now deprecated and uh, they will be removed in later version of Terraform. Again, uh, if you've been using them before, uh, you should have assumed that you are doing something bad. So now Terraform will simply raise a uh, deprecation warning and uh, it's better that you take them out and you use Terraform for uh, some some uh, generic things and not rely on these providers, provisioners, sorry. Uh, if, you, if you still want to call Habitat or Puppet or Chef or whatever, you can still use local exec, remote exec um, provisioners because they will not be removed. Uh, but this one, they're too specific for providers. Okay, I see some questions popping up in uh, uh, chat already, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, by the way, uh, Max does DevOps. If you go to Twitch, well, I can put it here on the screen. Uh, if you go to twitch.tv slash Max does DevOps, you can see a stream uh, by Max, who is doing very similar things to, to me, and uh, streaming about uh, DevOps, SRE, and uh, maybe a Terraform as well. So his uh, channel is pretty new, but uh, stay tuned and uh, he will uh, continue doing this, I'm quite certain. Okay, so the next thing which is uh, what's new in the Terraform world is related to not Terraform. Okay, let's move to testing. Recently I discovered this project and uh, uh, you may think like, well, this project has nothing to do with uh, Terraform. Absolutely. This project has nothing to do with Terraform infrastructure as code, but this project has a lot to do with common sense, which I really, really want to see applicable in infrastructure as code testing. I don't want uh, people to think about infrastructure as code testing as, hey, uh, it's okay, I will just find another tool and I will write uh, a lot of other code. Uh, OPA, no problem, or open policy agent in another programming language, no problem. Sentinel, another programming language, which lots of people don't even understand. Uh, and uh, it, they will just introduce another complexity to have uh, something uh, executed. And then they can say like, okay, this code looks correct or this code does something bad. Well, what I really, really like is that I want to use natural grammar. I know that it sounds like uh, maybe wrong or uh, you think that this is just crazy. But uh, for me, having an example of test written in uh, easier language is essential to understand complexity of infrastructure as code. I don't want to hide this complexity with just another wrapper, uh, which in some cases can be called Terra test or inspect or any other programming language, which will do this for me. So that's why I like this open validation. 
uh, for uh, for things uh, uh, like infrastructure as code testing. So my ideal uh, um, test uh, for infrastructure should be as easy written as possible. So, for example, uh, exam mm, what is it? Uh, if there is an uh, infrastructure in AWS, there should be VPC with cedar block uh, 10, 10, 10, 10 slash 60. Imagine this is the whole test uh, which your users has to write. I, I'm, I'm not kidding. No other HCL or Go or Python or whatever. Well, uh, we had uh, behavior-driven development uh, for a very long time, and uh, I used it back in the days when I was uh, developing in PHP, and there was programming language called uh, Gherkin. Uh, I was a big fan of it for, uh, for similar things, but uh, Gherkin used to be uh, containing uh, precise expressions. Here, we can use natural grammar where it will understand that, oh, you, you forgot this and that's okay. You wrote there. It's also okay. Maybe it's wrong in uh, English, but who cares? Oh, there is no the, no problem there. Uh, you see, it's uh, it's possible to uh, to adopt uh, and to understand keywords here. There are a lot of keywords here mentioned, like okay, AWS. Okay, there is VPC. Okay, there is Cedar Block. So it will be able to extract these key values and comparison operators. Uh, so yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, we can uh, go on with uh, with other things. I have uh, I have scheduled like a one and a half hour for this stream, um, but I think uh, yeah we can we can see how fast or how slow I go. Okay, so next one. So the next one is uh, TF Migrate. This is not a very new tool. Uh, well, I mean, it is pretty new tool and. Uh, uh, Masayuki Morita is from Japan, uh, same as a uh, guy from uh, uh, who created TF Lint. Uh, so it looks like uh, guys in Japan are actually big fans of uh, Terraform and they do a lot of crazy and helpful things uh, on the way. Uh, I know a few other projects by uh, Masayuki, uh, so you can go to his GitHub and see. Uh, some of these projects uh, you may you may have heard before, like TF Log or uh, HCL Edit or TF Schema, which is more popular uh, when you want to do some sort of auto completion. Uh, uh, what is cool in this project in TF Migrate? Uh, I will scroll just to one example here, and uh, you all know this code, right? So you wrote some uh, security group, and previously you call it foo, and now you call it bar, and uh, then you want to uh, change change name of uh, uh, security group. So you want to rename from foo to buzz. Okay, so you push this new code and then you run Terraform plan and then it tells you like, hey, I need to delete one thing and I need to uh, create one more thing. Well, uh, the thing is that uh, you didn't do anything with the code itself. You just changed this name. So what you want to do is that you want to write some sort of migration. Uh, I have uh, most experience with uh, migrations in the relational databases, so maybe they are slightly different here or than in databases, but the point is that we are describing instructions which has to be done. So here we say that just rename from uh, foo to bots. Then we run uh, TF migrate plan, and uh, what this command does is that it will simply run, um, uh, run or it will modify state file and uh, there will be nothing happening on actual resources. So they will not be deleted. So migration is updated and uh, then we run Terraform plan and now it says no changes. Uh, this as well as countless amount of other small tools are really interesting to uh, to see uh, like developing. Uh, I'm I'm big fan of uh, seeing uh, where problem parts for people are and migrations or, or renaming of resources was one of these. 
That's partially one of the reasons why I introduced uh, naming uh, of resources as uh, this. So if I have no clue what this resource uh, is going to be used or where, uh, where it's going to be uh, uh, suitable, I just call it this as self in some other languages like Python uh, or uh, uh, yeah, or in JavaScript. Uh, so here I use this, but uh, um, I'm not uh, mm, I'm not alone. A lot of people have difficulties with migrations where they just want to rename. And uh, I saw a few situations where people made uh, grammar mistakes in these names. Uh, not like here, because this is obviously a fake name, but they really uh, put some project name, for example, and then this project was uh, renamed. And then they have like, oh my god, I now have to recreate a lot of things. So this kind of tool uh, is helpful. Without this tool, you have to do uh, Terraform state pool, do some renaming there, and, uh, and uh, uh, Terraform state push. Or you can run Terraform state MV and uh, rename uh, that resource inside of state file as well, which is possible, but a little bit harder to do. Um, yeah, so TF migrate uh, is one of these tools. Okay, so last thing which has happened, well, it's not last, but it's kind of related. Complexity of uh, all infrastructure as management tool is just crazy. And this week I attended uh, CF, no, CDK day event where, uh, well, 4,000 uh, people watched it, a large amount of these people watched it live. I also watched it live for some parts. And uh, uh, the main message which I had from this uh, event, so first of all, what is CDK? CDK is uh, uh, not just uh, AWS CDK, which is cloud development kit, but it's also a uh, uh, same project implemented for Kubernetes ecosystem, uh, Terraform, and Azure is also starting. Uh, all of them are developing independently while using some of uh, code generation tools uh, from AWS. Uh, the thing is that uh, the, even the first message which I've heard from uh, some of these talks was like, hey, we were using uh, uh, Terraform uh, for some projects, but large amount of our projects are happily using uh, CloudFormation. And uh, we understood that CloudFormation is not giving us enough flexibility, so we were desperately looking for some options. And we are so happy to use CDK, and now we are heavily invested into CDK. Well, uh, that's not new message, at least for me, because uh, I've heard uh, similar uh, comments from many people who said that, oh my God, we don't understand what is uh, this project doing or how our infrastructure is uh, created or uh, who is uh, uh, like, w what's going on? So they were really looking forward uh, for different ways of uh, uh, generating code or getting better code reusability and so on. So CDK was natural uh, project for them. Uh, Terraform for CDK, is uh, uh, is pretty new and it's a little bit too early to say anything about it. Um, uh, like the reason why I'm saying this right now is that uh, this uh, AWS CDK and CDF uh, or CDK for Terraform, uh, this project uh, are starting or uh, are being to be uh, to kind of to develop because people have difficulties with existing tools and uh, these solutions started as a, like workarounds. So, ah, you have this problem. So here is CDK, which can help you. So I really uh, want us to look into complexity all the time. Complexity is everywhere. Uh, even if you wrote something simple uh, on any of these tools uh, and you have plans to update it in the future, uh, you have to be uh, able to understand what's going on. So CDK for Terraform is good start. Uh, in some direction. I cannot say if it's the right direction or not, but uh, what uh, what um, Mishra from Terraform uh, or from HashiCorp is saying is that there are already plenty of ways how you can invoke Terraform, right? You can write JSON, HCL, you can use even Kubernetes uh, to call Terraform to create resources there and a bunch of different other ways. So CDK is going to 
uh, provide you programmatic way of uh, calling or uh, working with Terraform configurations. We'll see, we'll see. Anyway, uh, I agree that this is many projects for Hacktoberfest. And uh, if you have not seen this um, uh, Hacktoberfest uh, critique before, I can tell you that a lot of projects are suffering already because people suddenly want to get badges because uh, they participated in the project uh, where they change syntax error in readme or they put uh, emoji inside of readme file and this creates enormous amount of noise. Uh, I received some of these messages myself on different projects and I simply close them because uh, like what else I can do? I don't want to spend time in explaining to a person who has just opened a github account that uh, this is not the right way of participation. So yeah, Hacktoberfest is going to be uh, uh, is going to be strange this year because the amount of people who just want to participate and get beige or t-shirt or whatever they give this year is just insane. Okay, um, so another thing is about uh, well, this was all about uh, what's new in uh, Terraform. And by the way, do you like light uh, today? There is no strange background somewhere because uh, I actually bought new light and it's crazy. I'm so happy now. I can see my screen and I can see myself in a nice view. Okay, so the next thing is uh, GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions is a uh, work in progress. Well, I don't have actually too much to say about it. Um, I can just tell you that uh, uh, um, uh, that uh, uh, GitHub Actions for Terraform AWS modules uh, has started, so um, Brian is working on uh, something there. He will uh, show it uh, like uh, in the near future, and uh, then we will see if there is a way or if there is need for anyone else to participate. Uh, yeah, pull request with emoji, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, first time I saw uh, where emoji can be used is that you can put emoji in uh, CSS uh, ID names inside of your HTML code and this will be valid. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah. Okay, so let's move on. So uh, actually I don't have so much to share about GitHub Actions as I expected, but uh, I hope it's, it's, uh, it, it's fine for you guys. Well, the next session uh, is is gonna to be is gonna to be upcoming events, right? Okay, upcoming events. Upcoming events is pretty big. So the first event which I want to share, which will be um, HashiConf this year, it's gonna to be online. Uh, I think it is. I think it is free for everyone, uh, and uh, you have to. Yeah, if you want, you can pay $39 to go to workshops, uh, but uh, main talks are free and workshops are usually very well sold out. So if you want, be fast. Well, all of them are sold out already. Anyway, uh, talking about talks, uh, I've been to many HashiConf, uh, well, I've been to all of them uh, for the last, I think, three, three, maybe four years. And uh, uh, I have my own uh, like uh, uh, expectation there. Uh, when it when it comes to online, uh, then uh, uh, things are usually slightly uh, slightly worse, like in general, because online events are not as cool as uh, offline. But uh, not for HashiConf. HashiConf was the first event which I attended uh, as digital, and I was amazed with uh, quality of uh, of everything what was there. So if you attended a bunch of different meetups uh, or even different conferences where things were not as engaging as you would uh, have them to be uh, if it would be, let's say, offline event, HashiConf Digital is uh, another type of event. So definitely I highly recommend to join uh, and to see uh, this yourself. Well, uh, there are kind of traditional things uh, going on. Uh, some talks by uh, uh, HashiCorp employees and some talks by customers or by partners. And uh, I'm usually uh, disappointed that there is not enough uh, engagement like, uh, or ways to participate, let's say on hallway track or different um, 
uh, community-led uh, tracks. So that's why we have uh, all day Hashi talks, uh, which will probably be this year for the third year already uh, in February. And also there are a bunch of different events uh, during the year. Uh, if we are talking about HashiConf in particular, there will be lightning talks uh, during the day. Um, I'm not sure how you can submit the, but uh, I think there will be information uh, published close to the date. Or if you want to uh, present something uh, cool during lightning talk, which is usually like 15 minutes, uh, where you have uh, 15 minutes uh, inside of Zoom, and uh, everyone can join this Zoom and they will be watching you there. So if you are interested, uh, you can reach out to me and I can connect you with uh, guys from HashiCorp who are organizing lightning talks in particular. Uh, all other talks here are pretty standard, uh, like uh, some, sp not sponsors, some, uh, well, some sponsors also uh, giving talks, but uh, uh, in general, it's just a uh, just traditional set of talks. One talk which uh, I am uh, interested, well, I don't know where is it, maybe it's in speakers, mm, is by, if you attended last, uh, last, uh, no, not last, uh, the first or second or third, I don't remember which one, where uh, I talked uh, with Barak from uh, uh, Chekhov, uh, this time there will be Om. Uh, who is co-founder and uh, CTO of Acurix, and he will be talking about uh, shifting uh, threat modeling to left. Well, uh, full abstract coming soon, and here is his bio. You can read all of this, but the amount of uh, security, 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 uh, or even cyber, cyber, cyber security is just insane. So it looks like this guy is going to be very secure. Well, security, 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 oh my God, he's really secure. Uh, no, but uh, jokes aside, uh, uh, he is working in a company which is called Acurix, and uh, they are developing product uh, similar to uh, Chekhov. If you guys want me to uh, talk to them and uh, ask to do a review similar as I did uh, with Barak uh, for Chekhov, uh, please leave comment and uh, uh, or you can uh, yeah you can just leave comment and I will try to uh, connect with them and see if they're interested enough. Uh, of course, there are uh, a lot of interesting things going to be announced because there are some mm, some things inside of schedule, I think, where they say uh, to be announced. Well, not here. Somewhere here it says uh, redacted. So uh, if it is redacted, Hashi HashiCorp session one, and you can see Jeff Mitchell there, this talk is going to be uh, security, about Vault, about something really, really, really secure here. Uh, and then if you see another uh, talk somewhere here and uh, some some other speakers, it's going to be about other products. Which exactly products are uh, going to be here? Uh, it's, uh, it's debatable um, and it's kind of interesting to see how people are discussing this on different social medias. Because uh, not many people outside of uh, HashiCorp has clear understanding of what is going to be announced. And uh, uh, we can just uh, guess what is it going to be. And uh, I was really surprised uh, to hear uh, very different uh, uh, proposals of what uh, HashiCorp is going to announce. Because Mitchell said on Twitter that uh, there are two products uh, which are open source and which they're going to announce. Uh, and now uh, community is given to uh, like to, to, to figure out what exactly is it. Well, we are not uh, required to guess. We can still go there and see this for the first time. But many of us want to know this in advance. So my assumption here is that this is going to be about security and this is not going to be about security. That's pretty much it what I can say right now. Uh, Talking uh, about like what uh, is in general community expectations or what people uh, think HashiCorp is thinking about. I have my own view, which I don't want to uh, say. Well, uh, at least now I can say about it because I don't know at least for sure. So my assumption here is that uh, this will be something related with infrastructure testing. Uh, uh, well, security, I have no clue. I'm not secure enough. My password is one, two, three, four. 
uh, well, not not really. Yes, it is one, two, three, four, but then it's uh, uh, base sixty four and part of this. Okay, uh, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, two days uh, should be fun, and uh, I, I highly recommend to join the. Uh, again, we'll see how they organize it. Uh, so yeah, the question is uh, why I'm not on the speaker list. Uh, well, the main thing is that uh, I'm not paying customer for HashiCorp. Okay, I, I represent community, open source, uh, people without money. Okay, so I can I can talk about different uh, HashiCorp products, primarily about uh, Terraform, how to save money, how to not uh, do something, how to not uh, lock yourself into different things, uh, how to not use different uh, products of uh, HashiCorp. Uh, and the reason why I do this is because uh, this is who am I. Uh, I have my own business and my business is uh, about helping customers to do what they want to do. So if they want to spin up infrastructure, I can tell you how to do this, but I'm not going to say like, yeah, this is how you do this and you have to buy this product by HashiCorp if I'm not believing into it. If I'm believing into it, then Take it easy, I will make sure that you buy this product. Uh, so yeah, that's why I'm a big fan of community uh, events like uh, all day uh, DevOps, which will be uh, in November, uh, where I'm gonna to speak, and then uh, all day Hashi, Hashi talks in February, a bunch of different meetups and so on. So uh, I, I, I think it's pretty interesting to see uh, what they do. Uh, they find speakers and they find uh, employees. So there is not really a representative from the community. Well, but my, my dreams are still that uh, one day I will speak at HashiConf and AWS reInvent. We'll see. This year I'm not going to speak at reInvent at least, but uh, maybe next year. Okay, another thing which is uh, uh, relevant. So make sure that you remember about HashiConf and uh, 22nd of uh, of October, I'm gonna to have live interview with uh, guys from Committed. Uh, so what Committed is doing, uh, they are organizing a bunch of different um, interviews with, uh, for example, Baruch uh, Sadogorsky will be, uh, well, in uh, six days, right? Yeah, in six days, then I will be 22nd of October. Uh, Yes, I will be talking about uh, whatever they want me to to ask. Really, I don't have any specific uh, agenda or uh, prepared questions even. Uh, but uh, the cool part here is that uh, Committed Tech uh, has uh, has been doing interviews with uh, core developers of different tools. Uh, like I'm not into end-to-end -end testing myself, but uh, I was told that these guys are actually top-notch in end-to-end uh, -end testing and they are creators of these tools as well as Robert Martin. Uh, well, uh, I guess you know what is clean code and uh, you can you can just go there and see his interview. Uh, I think it's it's pretty interesting. And uh, a bunch of other people, uh, they have been interviewing like uh, James Whittaker. Uh, you, you, you may hear his name before. Uh, if you if you if you are into these kind of uh, things, uh, make sure to watch them. Uh, all of this stuff is free which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, free registration and you will be updated. Okay, this was, uh, this was it. Right, and the last event, well, there are so many things going on. We are already 40 minutes into the stream and uh, we have not even started uh, Terra Grant, oh my God. Right, okay, I will hurry up a little bit. So this is um, another thing which uh, we are organizing. Well, don't pay attention that this says um, DevOps Norway. This is simply where uh, I am. Uh, I'm like located, like I, I live in Norway. But uh, anyway, everything what I do is uh, distributed uh, all the time. So if you are into lightning talks and if you want to uh, learn or if you want to present your talk for 10 or maybe 15 minutes, please make sure to go to this link and uh, submit your proposal and uh, then 17th of November we'll hear from you. We need much more proposal because we have like two hours already and mm, your talk can be about anything related to DevOps like culture, tool, 
just try to make it as interesting as possible. So obviously, if you're going to say about uh, how to install Zabbix uh, on-premise uh, with Ansible, well, sorry, but uh, mm -mm, not this time, okay? Uh, it's, uh, well, it, it's, not, it's not so uh, relevant for many people. Uh, I'm glad that you know how to install Zabbix uh, with Ansible. Uh, I don't know this, to be honest, so you are definitely uh, succeeding. But uh, just not for this event, okay? So try to find something more relevant or more uh, widely spread. Uh, not necessarily related to Terraform, honestly. Uh, well, you can talk about Pulumi if you want, uh, or you can talk about uh, um, anything you want, really. It's, it's totally up to you. So I will put links to all of these events into comments uh, under video on YouTube where you can watch this uh, and you can just uh, figure out um, this. Okay, so, uh, well, I have very short memory. I forget what is next. So the next thing is, uh, uh, okay, GitHub Actions, we already uh, covered it. Uh, they are in progress. And uh, honestly, there is not much interesting things which I want to share right now. There is a Q&A. Q&A has been not very active lately. Uh, uh, well, uh, so the question uh, from Vladimir is, uh, what about links? Uh, what you presented? Is it possible to see it? Uh, well, where I presented? At uh, meetups. Uh, previous meetups uh, were pretty much in real life, so they were not recorded. Uh, sometimes they were, sometimes not, but uh, uh, this time uh, we will have a recorded meetup um, and uh, links uh, to events uh, and links to what's new I will post uh, in the comments as well oh that's pretty cool so there are actually a few questions uh, two questions here I see for the first time so we'll try to uh, yeah 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 right right sorry guys uh, I can see that waiting to ask when you start um, uh, to talk about Terragram, well, this is going to be pretty, pretty much uh, next thing after Q and A. Okay, this Q and A should be very fast, but uh, believe me, Terragram will take a lot of time, so probably one hour. Uh, meanwhile, you can uh, come up with your questions related to Terragram, and I will try to embed them into the flow as well. <clears throat> it's kind of important for me to follow the schedule so that I can cut. Uh, parts related just to Terragrant into separate video and then it will be searchable easily. So let's go to... <coughs> mm, just what is it? Vladimir means links you just visited, I think. Well, yes, I will put uh, all links uh, into comment to YouTube video. So I will do this uh, right after the stream. I think it's uh, the easiest for me to do. Uh, okay, so uh, the first question, uh, what can be the reason of uh, access denied to uh, AWS ACM certificate resource when creating AWS uh, LB listener? The certificate itself is created and validated with Terraform. Well, this is, uh, I, I kind of, um, I have a lot of uh, things to say about uh, this question. I don't think we have a lot of time, honestly. Uh, the first thing here is that uh, when I hear these kind of questions, uh, I just go to examples. And I go to examples or inside of module where you are using it or inside of uh, uh, Terraform source code or I can search uh, GitHub for uh, the ways how people use it. Uh, I think I understand uh, more or less what can be the problem here. And this has been fixed actually inside of Mm, inside of uh, module, let's see. Mm. So ALB. So I will just uh, show some code, and probably it will explain um, explain how things are. Just one second. ACM. ACM this ACM certificate, right? Okay, just one second. I will first find it and then I will uh, explain what exactly the problem is. This is inside of outputs 
and then validate certificate. Yes, this is a tricky line. Okay, so uh, the, the thing which can be related again when I see um, mm, error message like uh, uh, like you specified access denied. Well, who exactly told access denied? Which service told it? What exactly you wrote? Like what kind of code uh, you wrote uh, there, and how it's supposed to? Uh, like what what did you want to do? This is really important because access denied. You can see. Uh, in many different cases. I will just explain uh, what is uh, usually the problem here. Is that uh, the thing is that uh, ACM certificate has uh, two resources. Registry, mm, uh, let's see, registry providers uh, resources and then ACM, no. resources and then here ACM ACM certificate and uh, certificate validation uh, the thing is that once you created a certificate it is already available but uh, uh, it's n it will take some time before this certificate is created and bef and uh, when you can actually use it because it has to be validated first so the trick here is to uh, explicitly uh, use, oh yeah, they they use it here as well. So inside of AWS Load Balancer Listener, you have to make sure that you are using ACM certificate validation resource, because uh, this will tell you that uh, it will kind of make sure that a resource has been created and valid, and now it can think about to create a Load Balancer Listener. So that's exactly uh, what this module is doing. So here uh, we are. Uh, picking up uh, uh, ID of certificate uh, or ARN of certificate either from uh, certificate validation if it was uh, enabled or from ACM certificate resource depending of whether certification was enabled or not. Uh, so the code which we have inside of module is uh, doing this uh, conditional and uh, inside of uh, ALB module where I'm creating uh, listeners, I just uh, get this ACM certificate RN and uh, it will be automatically uh, valid and then it can be used. Well, again, this is just an assumption that we are talking about this uh, access denied error. Just make sure that you are using ARN from a validation, not from the certificate itself. Um, so yeah, I think that's, pretty much it uh, about this uh, question. Okay, uh, the next thing I tried to Terraform rollback state and push with force I get cannot import state with serial zero and new state. Yeah, exactly, how to fix it? Well, how to fix uh, errors when you, mm, well, where do I have, maybe I have it here somewhere. Mm. Yeah, I should have some Terraform TF state here. Yes. So think about this. Uh, this is your example. This is your Terraform state file. Uh, every time when you uh, roll back your state file, uh, or every time when you do anything like rolling forward and do any changes in your infrastructure and apply this, your serial will increase. So it is quite easy to see that some very uh, active uh, projects will have this uh, like, I don't know, 1000 or 1001, then 1002 and so on. Uh, Terraform has a concept of uh, making sure that it's only uh, updating this change. So you cannot uh, uh, accidentally push previous uh, state file because your, uh, because your serial is now uh, smaller than it was before. So what you need to do is that if you do rollback, it is actually uh, in terms of Terraform, it means you take content from previous state file, but you are applying it and you're committing it like rolling forward. It's the same as with Git. When we do revert, we are usually reverting and uh, reverting, sorry, and uh, committing this change. So that's why we are rolling forward. Well, maybe not best uh, explanation, but still the point is that you need to increase this one. Uh, if I now have in like in this code, 
uh, if I now have one, uh, it must be two, three, four, five. I, it cannot go zero. And uh, yes, you need to do this uh, state push uh, minus force. Just make sure that you change this serial to one or to, to bigger. Uh, you can also run terraform state pull uh, to pull this file locally and then uh, do some changes here and then terraform state push uh, minus force and make sure that you change serial to bigger. Again, play with it on uh, small things uh, which are not critical uh, to familiarize yourself. So I think uh, this will help you. Okay, um, I got error like state snapshot in Terraform 1227, which is newer than 1227. Someone applies using newer version, but we want to back to previous one. Well, this is kind of related, right? So Anonymous, please talk to John. Uh, how John stuck into this problem and now John helps you. Now John knows how this uh, has to be working. Well, no, I'm kidding. Uh, anyway, you can... Uh, uh, well, uh, I have slides somewhere where I put this uh, as a comment, but I don't have time to look into it. So the summary uh, of this solution is um, First of all, you roll back your version uh, the way you want, so to 26, um, because that's what you want, right? And uh, then you need to download your, um, uh, what is it, your, your previous copy or previous version of your uh, Terraform state file. Uh, if I'm assuming that you're using S3 bucket, then S3 API has, uh, um, has, has a way to get information from uh, uh, by version ID. So you take file which was previously versioned. And uh, again, you run Terraform state push minus force by pushing that old file into new uh, as new one. So from now on, Terraform will know it and will uh, use this new version. Um, yeah, if, if this is not clear, uh, let me know in comments and I will find a precise slide uh, where uh, or how this can be done in four lines of shell script. Uh, I talked about this uh, when 0, 0 0.12, I think, was released. So also there were some situation when people uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't use latest version, uh, so that's why they used to roll back. But it also works in the same way you know, between patch version update. Okay, okay, I hear you very well, guys. Well, I don't hear you, but still, uh, the point is Terragram. Okay, is everyone excited? <laughs> yeah. Okay, at least I'm excited. So I am so much excited that I will switch to um, to Terragram here. Okay, so now let's talk about Terragram. So what is Terragram? Uh, why to use it? Why not to use it? Um, maybe I will tell very small subset of information which uh, uh, which I can tell or which I want to tell. Uh, this is primarily because of time limitations, not because I want to hide something. So if I will understand that uh, we are very much out of time, I will just uh, cut there and make uh, the rest for next time. Honestly, I didn't expect to spend um, uh, so much for Terragram, but when I was preparing uh, for this, uh, I discovered a lot of things. Okay, so Terragram. Terragram is a tool created by uh, Grantworks, uh, I think in about 2015 or maybe end of 15, 16, I don't remember. Uh, this kind of tool is uh, initially created to fill missing gaps of uh, Terraform. Okay, uh, if you remember or if you think that this is all what it uh, can do, uh, or when you looked at the, this tool before and you think that nothing has changed, you are absolutely wrong. This tool has evolved significantly and, uh, well, I have cold coffee. 
the cold coffee is still good. And uh, this tool has evolved so much and it has been developing in uh, so different directions that uh, it's really hard to, to highlight. Just forget everything what you knew about it if you've been using it before. Okay, you are totally new. So the first thing here is that uh, uh, TerraGrant is project by Grantwork is completely open source and uh, it has um, started as a tool to add missing bits to Terraform like uh, uh, state locking uh, using DynamoDB and, uh, and uh, something else what I even forgot right now because it was so long time ago. Uh, anyway, uh, Terragrant uh, is doing a large amount of uh, things uh, which you, as uh, as in analogy with CloudFormation and uh, CDK, would be thinking about, hey, why CloudFormation is so bad or why I have to use uh, this and why it feels so unnatural. And the same thing goes with uh, using uh, tools like uh, Terraform. You start using it, you are writing one file, two files, hundred files, and then you think like, mm, well, now it sounds a little bit too hard or I have no clue what's going on. And uh, you will natively uh, evolve into something like uh, make file to orchestrate your invocations uh, or some code generations because you feel that you are repeating yourself way, way, way too much. So for me, that's exactly where uh, Terragrant uh, is uh, is right now. Everything what you have been struggling with Terraform potentially can be solved using Terragram. Potentially is keyword here. Okay, let's look into a uh, uh, website. Terragram.grantwork.io is a website where we have documentation. Uh, documentation is not as bad as it uh, as you may think because I increased font size. Honestly, the worst part in this website is small font size. Well, I have to increase it every time. Uh, no, that, I don't know why I'm joking so much today. It's, ser it's serious stuff, you know, guys. So, um, first uh, thing here is um, why it is needed. Okay, a few people uh, wonder why do we need uh, to use something like uh, like any other tools uh, if we're happy with Terraform. Well, you are happy with Terraform. I'm just going to look into feature sections and talk about some of this uh, in more details. Uh, when you're working, and I will show uh, much more code uh, later, uh, but I just want to start with uh, uh, with uh, what is it. Okay, If I show you uh, two pieces of code, it may be not as impressive as about highlighting what are actually the features of it. So Terragrant allows us to uh, focus on what is actually the essential part of your infrastructure. And uh, every time when I'm thinking about uh, what is infrastructure, I'm thinking about just uh, calling some libraries, calling some module, calling some reusable component and tell what I want it to do. That's pretty much it. I don't want to care about uh, uh, what is actually inside and uh, and what kind of limitations uh, Terraform has and uh, so on. As a user, that's my uh, entry point. I don't want to do anything else than just providing values into my modules and then infrastructure is created and I can happily use it. I don't care if if even Pulumi is used inside of it, honestly. Uh, that's, uh, that's not what I'm uh, worried about. So uh, I, I really want to focus on uh, dryness because I don't want to repeat my configurations more necessary or more often than it is necessary. And uh, for me, uh, dryness is uh, uh, removing everything what is not uh, everything what is repeated into fewer places. So using some sort of uh, code compositions uh, or using some sort of uh, um, like variety of different patterns by reducing amount of files uh, and amount of uh, places uh, where I have to uh, go and apply changes. Uh, you may disagree that dry is uh, this and uh, I'm not going to argue because dry is a little bit... Uh, it, it, dry is not dry, honestly. So uh, another thing is that it allows you to keep configuration of remote state 
uh, in very uh, canonical way in very few places. Literally in one place per project is good practice. And uh, then you can also uh, uh, tell how to uh, actually invoke Terraform uh, with, uh, with what kind of parameters you want to invoke it and so on. Uh, I will go through this in much more details. And uh, additionally, it allows you to work with uh, multiple entities. Uh, by default, it's focusing on AWS accounts, but uh, uh, I don't think there are any like technical limitations uh, to, and let's say, to work with multiple uh, Azure subscription. If you want, you can do this uh, quite successfully with Azure su subscription, no problems. So uh, when we are looking into uh, in, into multiple resources, that's where uh, code reusability is essential. You don't want to copy paste something uh, for many environments or many AWS accounts. You want to parameterize your AWS account. And uh, Terragram has ways and has functions which you can use to, let's say, get account ID. And another, yeah, another cool thing is uh, possibility of uh, running different hooks before and after. So you may know different, uh, mm, uh, you may understand sequence of different commands, how it runs. So for example, when we are working with Terraform, we run init, plan, apply, and that's it. When we are invoking some uh, tool like Terragram, it, uh, it uh, uh, injects its own hooks uh, between calling Terraform. So we can say before apply, do this, or after plan, do that, uh, and so on. Um, again, I will show much more of that. Uh, auto retry, well, it's good, but uh, I don't really understand how it works uh, in details, because sometimes there can be different types of, uh, of auto retries, like uh, w w what can be the problem? The problem with uh, Terraform is fine, but the problem with providers downstream is another type of uh, retries. Uh, what Terragram is able to help you with is that if registry suddenly is unavailable or if GitHub is suddenly unavailable and it cannot pull uh, your source code, for example, then it will try to, uh, to retry it again. Caching is another interesting piece uh, which was added, um, or which was like improved Quite recently, uh, it took several iterations to make it actually useful, uh, as far as I understand, because uh, there were some uh, strange uh, uh, like downsides uh, when this was integrated during the last months or so. And so on. Uh, AWS House means that uh, Terragram is able to do a little bit more. So before it's doing something, it can assume some IAM roles uh, and it can understand how to use different profiles and so on. Debugging, well, this is big question mark. Uh, the thing is that debugging in Terraform is challenged. Debugging in uh, Terragram is also challenging because it doesn't give you enough context. It gives you some information about which variables were passed here and there, but uh, not so helpful, uh, let's say, from end user perspective and you will still see a lot of error messages uh, uh, when you use it, which will simply say uh, some encrypted message which you hardly understand who is uh, generating it and why. Okay, so this was uh, pretty much features uh, as they uh, announce it and as it is described on their website. Mm. Now let's go through. So there were a couple of questions which people asked uh, already. Mm. Uh, well, uh, l let me just see a few questions here. Uh, I will just put them on screen for now, but I'm not going to answer them probably immediately. Uh, so yeah, the first question, how do you handle inheritance uh, with Terragram? Uh, what would be the best practice? And I will just move a little bit to the side so that you can see here, I am using the read Terragram config, but I'm not sure if it's the right thing to do. Well, uh, uh, usually there is no right thing to do. Uh, if you are unsure that this is the right way to do or not right, 
ask someone else to look at this and uh, let them to explain what's going on. If they will uh, look at this and think like, mm, I don't understand what's going on here, then you did something wrong. And this is typically what I see with a uh, project uh, where uh, developers who created this understand it very well, but uh, users uh, or even these developers after some uh, break doesn't understand what's going on, why he did this this way and so on. So just uh, look another peer uh, or ask another peer of eyes to look at your solution. Uh, but uh, anyway, read uh, Terragram config is very uh, powerful way of including different things. So most likely the answer is yes, it is right. Okay, a um, few samples I will uh, show here. Okay, so this is one uh, repository which I'm gonna to go through. Uh, this is another one and this is this is third one well this third one is not finished yet but still um question which i hear which i have actually received uh, before this stream by someone uh, well uh yeah actually by uh, sven by sven lita i guess uh, so Sven asked uh, if I can explore some of the AWS IAM multi-account examples you have put up. Uh, well, uh, mm, yes, I I don't have actually examples. Uh, oh no, I have. Well, that's a problem. I, I have so many different projects laying around. I think this is it. No, not this. Mm. A reference. This one. Yeah, this one is. Okay, yeah, this one is uh, uh, related to the question by Sven. Uh, so, yeah, uh, talking about coding structure, and I will go through all of this and explain coding structure, uh, how it, like, what, what is actually the difference. Again, the main uh, reference is going to be this meta repository where. Uh, I contain a meta configuration for all repositories, teams, files inside of Terraform AWS modules organization. I pointed to this uh, uh, repository a few times already during previous streams, and I think it is uh, still relevant because here I use Terragram uh, in, uh, in the public. Uh, okay, so uh, talking about structure, well, I don't, I don't know where to start from, but let, let's start from any place. Let's start from, sorry, from this one. Okay, this Terragrant reference architecture uh, is uh, the main place where I uh, started putting information about, hey guys, uh, this what is a reference architecture the way I see it. I have been uh, improving this uh, repository over time and added a few things here and there and upgraded to different versions of, uh, of tools. So it should be quite, uh, quite uh, relevant right now. So what is uh, interesting here is that uh, here we have a uh, structure. Uh, we can see Acme master, prod and staging. Uh, these folders, there is actually a description here below if you want to read. Uh, these folders are contain information about each resources or infrastructure within these AWS accounts. So here I can say that uh, my infrastructure is um, grouped by regions, by AWS accounts. And there are some global stuff, some regional stuff. Uh, so this is uh, one way of uh, organizing infrastructure. This way is uh, the most popular one where, uh, because it has been uh, um, like uh, presented or introduced uh, back in the days by uh, creators of uh, Terragram. And that's why it is uh, uh, usually taken as standard or as recommended by many people. Uh, the approach which uh, is uh, described in this uh, solution is that uh, uh, you take your uh, logical provider mental model, uh, which in this case it is uh, AWS, and we just understand how AWS resources are, uh, are operating. So we understand that inside of AWS, there is concept of 
uh, region or uh, AWS accounts, and then there are regions, and then there are services, and then there can be some environments. So we lay this as a folder structure to uh, to uh, to make it as uh, similar as possible. I find this extremely useful uh, for many reasons. Um, main reason here is that uh, you as user don't have to think twice about uh, what you are going to change. So you you just ah okay of course I'm going to change. Uh, uh, application load balancer inside of uh, EU Central, which is in production. Well, obviously you should go here and do some changes inside of this folder. So this is really important to understand that your infrastructure is uh, designed in a way that uh, you don't have to think twice. So you, you only have to understand how AWS is structuring its own resources and uh, what are the boundaries of these resources. So that's why there are folders like uh, uh, global, because you may know that I am accounts or some roles, they are global for the whole account. And the same for Route, route 53 zones, um, as well as, uh, uh, as well as what else? Well, you know, you know AWS better than me, I guess. So the point here is that uh, this is very good starting point and you start with that one uh, in many, many cases. The second uh, step of code uh, structure uh, and how to look at this is that uh, you may look into code and structure uh, thinking about uh, what is your uh, working area. So working area is, uh, uh, I don't have any example, I think, um, laying around, uh, but I can just explain that working area is uh, another logical construct on top of uh, uh, let's say your cloud provider concept where you group things uh, together the way you work on them for example in your case uh, it can be one uh, serverless function is actually uh, a lot of different resources so you may think about uh, one serverless function uh, contains of uh, uh, AWS uh, Lambda resources IAM groups maybe a Lambda function permissions and uh, maybe a little bit more things uh, related to this as a working unit. Uh, this is particularly useful for situations uh, like serverless, because uh, serverless resource itself uh, is very seldomly used uh, independently. You often use it in conjunction with uh, API Gateway or with CloudFront, so you may have them uh, residing a little bit closer together. And uh, the third pattern which I, um, which I want to highlight here is related to uh, this separation between service provider oriented, uh, which I was talking earlier, versus application provider oriented. In uh, application uh, or application oriented approach, uh, we have uh, the basic thing is uh, application specific uh, like entities. Uh, where, let's say, when we're talking about uh, making changes to application infrastructure, we're not thinking specifically about uh, which services we are going to affect by doing this. We are talking about application uh, from, uh, let's say, application developer point of view. We are talking about this as a whole. Uh, this is very useful uh, way of thinking if you have uh, application with a lot of interconnected services. So then, uh, literally, it looks like this. You have application and uh, application infrastructure. And application infrastructure is actually a mass of all SQS, SNS, IAM, Lambdas, and so on. So all of this is like one big ball of mud. Uh, sometimes, uh, if it is not very big, uh, it is a rather efficient way of uh, operating with it. Uh, but you have to be very careful because uh, it will just... Uh, it, it can destroy the point of uh, uh, infrastructure as code if you put too much things into one uh, module and then your module suddenly become unmanageable. Uh, but uh, yeah, just uh, think about this. Uh, service provider oriented is what uh, I showed on this screen versus application uh, oriented approach. 
Also, you may uh, have different types of providers involved into one infrastructure. So then uh, having service provider uh, oriented approach is uh, rather efficient to my mind because you have uh, separation on the very high level. For example, you, you may have folder called uh, AWS and then another folder next to it called uh, Rancher, another folder called Google and so on. So this way you have very clear understanding of, okay, what do we have? We have this provider, this and this. Okay, let's dive into each of these specifically and let's figure out what's going on inside. So think about this as a way of, uh, of organizing uh, your code. Um, on the example which I showed here, uh, meta configuration, I'm talking about uh, uh, GitHub resources primarily. So here I have, uh, I have structure related for, let's say, main, where I have main configurations related to repositories, users, branches, and so on, which is not one resource, because it, it would be just uh, just uh, wasting of, uh, uh, of, <laughs> of kilobytes. Uh, but uh, I just uh, decided to work on this as main, as like all GitHub uh, user role permissions and so on as a whole. And then there are a lot of smaller repositories where I take care of each individual repository as a separate entity. And I want to do changes, then I will do them in one of these. So that's, uh, that's one way of organizing it. Okay, now let's uh, go into the next thing. The next one is, well, the list is pretty big. I don't, uh, I don't know where to start even. But um, let me look into, let me look into this code. Sorry, not this code. Yes, I, I should share it somewhere here. Cool. Now you should see this better. I will close something. Uh, so what I'm gonna to uh, to go in details. I'm gonna to show some of the features of Terragram, and I will talk about uh, code, how it is written, and why it is written. I will pick a rather small example for this. Uh, not not uh, what many of you uh, may expect, because if we just go into uh, details of let's say. Uh, multi-provider implementation, uh, I will probably lose uh, more than half of uh, people who watch this right now. And I don't want to lose people. Again, uh, let's, uh, let's increase complexity as we move along. And if you have uh, something related to this specific section, please ask and we will uh, go through this. Okay, so the first thing here is that uh, AWS allows uh, us to use different roles when we work with different pieces of infrastructure. Uh, Terragrant reference architecture, this is uh, the place where I am right now. And uh, here I have different folders. Uh, if I go to prod, then I see uh, uh, some infrastructure which is deployed in production. And if I go to any of this region, as I said, I have some configurations here. But uh, how do I know which uh, IAM permissions uh, I should get when I'm modifying application load balancers here? Well, I may use uh, different uh, AWS credentials and I may switch them uh, myself and remember to switch them because, oh, now I'm going to production. So I need to assume a role in the production environment. Uh, or, of course, I can do this automatically in some CI. Uh, it's not related. The point is that I need to do this. Uh, the way how I've been using this uh, in the past, I don't do this so so um, like so often nowadays. I don't know why, but uh, in the past I've been using this quite often. Is that I used the envrc file where uh, my tool, which is called dir env, it's called dir env, uh, will assume it is an external tool which you have to install I think using brew install dir env uh, it will automatically look for files and rc and it will export this environment variable uh, when I am working inside of this folder so that's exactly what I want so when I'm gonna to be uh, applying changes into ALB uh, dir env script 
will automatically tell Terragrant to use this role. That's pretty much it. There is uh, nothing else what I have to do. The thing is that uh, in order to assume this role, I have to have some uh, IAM credentials installed somewhere. But uh, these credentials can be uh, set as usually using tools like AWS Vault or Vaulted, uh, or I can put them into environment variables uh, in any different ways. Uh, so once I have this uh, uh, nvrc here, and then I have nvrc here, you can see that it's, uh, it's commented, but it's using different uh, account IDs because master account is another account. You can limit this the way you want. You can limit the roles uh, any way you want and uh, let your developers to assume this code or this role if they want. For example, uh, all infrastructure is, uh, is open in your organization and everyone can see it, but uh, they can execute it only if they have permission to assume this role. So if they don't have permission, then they cannot do, uh, they cannot run TerraGrant here and uh, infrastructure will not be updated. Okay, uh, this is easy thing. The next one is related to TerraGrant hooks. In many situations, you want to, uh, to, to do something uh, before you run plan or before you run applies. Uh, let me find uh, inside of meta repository, I am, I have, uh, which one is GitHub, this one, yes. So I'm going to uh, set GitHub token uh, environment variable uh, every time when I'm going to call Terraform uh, where var is supported. So for things like Terraform plan, Terraform apply, and so on, it will automatically run mm, CLI before, uh, mm, yeah, it will, it, not before, sorry, it, it will just set this environment uh, variables uh, by calling this uh, run CMD. So it's, it's not related to hooks as such, uh, but uh, sometimes, well, uh, hooks, why do I have hooks? Hooks. No, I don't have hooks here. Okay. Anyway, the point is that uh, we want to be able to 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 do something before apply. Uh, here, I'm not using uh, hooks. Actually, I'm using uh, features of Terragram to run command, and it will run command uh, called Secret Hub read. This is uh, where token is stored, and it will make sure that uh, Terragram is quiet. So this secret is not actually uh, output uh, inside of um, uh, inside of std out uh, which is very important if you are, if you want to run something safer than usual so this is one way of uh, getting uh, secrets or getting something before uh, be before you can use it uh, talking about hooks well uh, i kind of uh, yeah, I kind of uh, don't use hooks anymore. And the reason why I don't use it anymore is because uh, there is a block called uh, generate. Generate allows uh, us to uh, set information uh, from this file into this pass. Uh, so this file name is going to be underscore backend tf and uh, it will override that file if it, uh, if it already exists. So th that's uh, the right way of uh, generate and remote state configuration and this remote state will now be stored inside of my repository so if i go to main here is file called uh, backend tf uh, well actually let me explain this the way how teragrant works uh, the way how it is supposed to be working okay you have your infrastructure code uh, written in any structure you want and then you specify different files like uh, Terragrant HCL is by default. Uh, you can tell Terragrant to use different files if you want, but uh, by default it will just use Terragrant HCL. So the syntax of this file, actually it's easier to show on small example here. Here is uh, Acme serverless, uh, which I'm going to show now. Here we have... Mm, 
let's say API Gateway. Okay, yeah, that's a good example. So inside of API Gateway, uh, what I'm uh, what I'm having right now, okay, uh, we have uh, block Terraform where we point to which Terraform module we want to use, and then we use uh, block uh, include to tell Terragrant to in to go upwards from this one and include first file which is called Terragrant HCL here. So it goes uh, from this folder to this one, and then inside of Acme Serverless it finds Terragrant HCL. And what it does, it literally get the whole content of this one and combine it here. So it just put it here instead of this one and merge uh, existing blocks as well. Uh, so this is first way of don't repeat yourself. Okay, finding parent folders, that's a function which is built in inside of Terragram and it does uh, going upwards and uh, applying this. And then we have a couple of blocks, dependencies and dependency, which are not very much relevant right now. And we have inputs, uh, which is uh, just a list of arguments which this specific module accept. Okay, that, that's uh, the all. Uh, like that's pretty much it. If you look into the uh, list of these arguments, you can see that uh, there are integrations and there are some references to dependency. Dependency dot output dot something. So this is where uh, things are uh, extremely useful, especially uh, now. Well, they, they were, sorry, it's actually wrong what I said. They were extremely useful before Terraform 0.13 uh, came out. Uh, and I will just explain it uh, in more details. The thing is that uh, what we have here on line 30, we specify that we want to use uh, we want to <coughs> get uh, this lambda function IRN, which is inside of outputs of this module lambda, which is actually a dependency. And this dependency is located inside of config pulse dot dot slash lambda. So here we are. So this block contains reference to where the dependency is located. So here we have information. Okay. Uh, what I can do here. What I normally would do is that I can write IRN and then blah 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 and then figure out lambda ID. So first I need to go to that module, run this or to that folder, run Terraform or Terragram and then put this value. Uh, what this dependency will do is that it will simply go to that folder and run Terraform output. Terraform output will uh, output JSON and the Terraf grant will simply take one of values which uh, which you reference here and it will do this for you so every time when you specify dependency and you are applying changes inside of this folder Terragrant will go to that folder and it will run uh, it will run Terraform output and it will put it here uh, if you have a lot of these dependencies, or even a lot of dependencies which are dependent on dependent on dependent, for example, uh, it will take ages to resolve all of this. And literally, it takes ages uh, for some situations already if you structure your code in a very like um, uh, service-oriented way, where you have uh, lambda and lambda function may have dependency to lambda layers and lambda layers may have dependency to something else, then every time when you need to resolve lambda function IRN, you need to call to the very end, which is uh, just time consuming. This has been improved uh, recently in Terragram, where we can now say that we want to uh, cache dependencies uh, on certain level. Uh, uh, this is a great idea, but uh, uh, like for us, uh, when we use uh, when we use Terragram, we had a lot of uh, challenges with it. So sometimes we were not able to get it up and running, but at the end, uh, I think it works. So yeah, if you if you have a lot of uh, interdependencies, uh, make sure that uh, uh, you you kind of optimize them. Uh, another thing related to dependency is there is block called dependencies. And uh, this is where uh, you can specify 
that when you are applying changes into your uh, uh, API gateway level, you also need to apply uh, changes into your other layers. For example, here can be layers which are not related to Lambda or to API gateway as such, but they may be related to some other tools or some other services which, which are not directly connected to API gateway. So you can specify a list of paths here and uh, Telegram will apply those changes first and then it will apply this one. Uh, it's easier if you try it and then you will understand how things work. Uh, I will probably run it as well. Well, where exactly uh, it is necessary? Uh, one thing here is inside of Lambda. Yes, inside of Lambda, what I want to do uh, is that I want to also uh, go to dependency and I want to get um, allow triggers to make sure that I allow uh, this Lambda function to be invoked from API Gateway, which is specified here inside of this output. So I could run this one, but then you are uh, uh, soon discovering situation like circle of dependency. So from one side, you want to apply changes to Lambda, which is dependent on API Gateway. And when uh, Terragrant will resolve API Gateway, it will look and it will figure out that, oh, I actually depend on Lambda as well. So this is circle dependency, which uh, is not so easy to solve in many cases. Uh, and for serverless, uh, it is in particular challenging to, to solve because there are a lot of resources just uh, interconnected uh, in very complicated way, uh, but uh, it's not related to Terra as such. Um, so I will skip this for now. A uh, few comments uh, related to great parts of uh, Terra Grant. Uh, you may think that, uh, at least if you went to documentation and you saw, or maybe it's time to run something, right? I don't know, is there anyone who's still watching? <laughs> Let's see. Yes, there are uh, 14 people watching, good. So it means that we can continue. Okay, so... Um, Mm, yes, good, 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 okay, good. Uh, okay, so let me just switch to terminal and show how things work, because now I'm going to talk about different Telegram commands uh, and what is actually happening there. Yes, if you have questions, you can write them, and maybe if it's related to exactly what I just showed, I will explain this. So feel free to write question. Uh, okay, so here is uh, the way. Uh, I have my code inside of, well, I can probably increase font size even. Yes, okay, I can, I can increase it a little bit bigger. So what I wanted to show is that uh, here is my infrastructure three uh, where I have something inside of API gateway something in lambda and uh, I have another file which is parent uh, which is uh, teragrant HCL okay uh, so this teragrant HCL uh, if I uh, look into into it it contains similar information as I showed earlier. It contains block uh, what to do with um, uh, with common variables, which I just comment out because there is no need for me to include something. But here is the same thing. Find in parent folders is used to find first mm, existing files. Uh, this can be required or can be optional. And this is usually the place where I see a lot of creativity from people. You can include things recursively, conditionally, and be extremely flexible. Well, most of this flexibility means that uh, you will not uh, be able to understand what's going on very soon. Or if you ask new people. Uh, I saw some very crazy things which were 
working but not many people was able to understand where exactly this file was sourced and uh, there is a question already uh, in simple way how do you debug any problems on teragrant level simple answer it might be just use teragrant uh, debug flag but maybe there is something useful no there is nothing useful honestly and uh, yeah if you find uh, uh, information presented by teragrant debug flag useful uh, then this is the best what you can get really that's uh, I think this is just by historical reasons, honestly. Uh, it's not because of uh, like uh, bad design or bad uh, things or uh, strange people develop this. It's just uh, this how things were developed. Uh, when it was started in 2015-16, uh, this project was developing uh, so fast and it brought a lot of useful features uh, in first place. Then there were few, um, few let's say half year maybe when things were added, not as useful I would say, uh, but still uh, debugging is historically hard to do inside of Terraform and inside of uh, Terraground as well. Uh, I have no clue if it will be uh, simplified in the near future on any of these sites. Another uh, question by Constantin. If we have common variables, what is the difference between HCL, TF, VARs, and in our case, we use YAML format file to store them? Uh, well, uh, uh, answering first one is that if you use, uh, uh, if you use, uh, what is it? Um, uh, TF, VARs cannot contain any same dynamic. Okay, so you, you only have to put very static values there. Uh, so it all has to be resolved already. Uh, it means that uh, your just one second. Mm, your well, where is? Yeah. So anyway, uh, Terraform TFRs as well as all other TFRs, they're extremely static. Uh, if we are talking about uh, including HCL, then inside of HCL files you can put any dynamic information as well. You can use. Uh, uh, read, uh, what was it? Read teragrand. I think read teragrand config uh, function to read from any of these uh, configuration files. Uh, it will read HCL uh, and it will process HCL into native structures. So if you have read read terraform config function to read from, uh, let's say, uh, a touch dot <laughs> touchka. Uh, a dot uh, HCL, then this will be mapped into native uh, list maps and so on. So you can reference to them uh, by uh, by by key. So you can then uh, get them. Uh, in Telegram example, they use regional HCL. Yeah, exactly. So uh, they can use uh, anything related to uh, HCL and include it using read Telegram HCL. And uh, that's uh, that's very uh, good pattern. Um, I think uh, it is highly recommended to split your configuration files and put them in places where they belong. If you have regional dot uh, HCL or dot TFRs or dot uh, YAML, it doesn't matter. But it, what's important is that it is stored in the place where you define your region configuration. Uh, so if I look into Acme prod EU central, I have regional TFRs here. And again, it doesn't matter if it is TFRs. TFRs here is just by historical reasons because uh, it was uh, not possible to read uh, read uh, Telegram config files before. But uh, anyway, information inside of regional is very static. It contains just uh, uh, which region we are nothing else okay so mm, right so where i was yeah and you can also see dear env is suddenly <laughs> suddenly working uh, so dear env uh, automatically loaded envrc file and uh, it exported 
Terra Ground IM role because I was uh, switching to prod uh, account. So th this means that uh, if I would run Terra Ground apply there, then it would use this uh, IM role which uh, I instructed it uh, to have. And again, if my user wouldn't have permission to assume that role, that's another problem. Then, uh, then I'm a bad guy who was not allowed to do this. So that's that's good. Okay, if we're looking to serverless uh, again here, three. Uh, what I have here essentially two folders: API Gateway and Lambda. If I go to API Gateway, and then what I do here is it. I can run, I can run Terragrant in it, mm. and what's going on here? Well, <laughs> I have uh, good news and bad news for you guys. So the bad news here is that uh, uh, it worked, and you may think that oh my god, uh, that's a lot of output and uh, where to even look. Uh, like what's going on here uh, well yes this is a lot of output but this has nothing to do with real output user local bin this is even more output right so you can see that this is even more output um, the way how this can be done like if you compare this output it's a lot, but still uh, can be simplified. And this. Uh, so what's going on here? This is this is a function which I use because I don't want to see a lot of uh, things. So I cut everything what is teragrand, timestamps, um, pass. I simplify because I don't want to see uh, these prefix all the time. Uh, so here is this function. If you if you want to see a little bit less uh, from Terragrant. Uh, this is function for you. Yeah, you can go to like, I think, uh, yeah, just one second. I will find it. Uh, we love output. Yes, when it is self-explanatory. Well, uh, I don't think uh, the output uh, is easier in many tools written in Go. I don't know why, but uh, I felt this uh, many times. Um, okay, let me see. Yes, here is this function. Mm, I will put this link into chat right now. Maybe it's... Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, this was about output. Uh, there is a lot of output. Uh, you can make it uh, less, but uh, not so not so significantly, I would say. Um, so what I did right now is that I run Terragrant in it, and uh, uh, it just verified which version I'm using, and it downloaded uh, dependencies. In this case, it was this module. It downloaded it. Cool. Then it generated some uh, files, which I uh, uh, instructed it to generate. The way how it is in uh, how it works is it mm, teragrant hcl. So here is a configuration file which is in the parent directory. We have this in, uh, block called generate, which was added approximately well less than a year ago at least, uh, where we can specify uh, what kind of files do we want to add uh, by teragrant. So in this case, uh, I'm adding content of uh, provider section and I save it inside of main providers.tf. Same I do for remote state, uh, which is stored inside of uh, backend TF. Uh, one of the um, convention, which uh, I think I, I <laughs> at least I thought I'm following, is that uh, if this file was uh, generated, I started with uh, underscore. Same as uh, if this file is private, uh, I like to start it with underscore. Uh, so that's why uh, this backend is starting with underscore. I don't know why I didn't put uh, underscore here, but uh, I think I should. 
The point is that uh, the way how it works, let me explain one more time. We have, uh, we have this structure. Here we specify, yes, so here we specify that uh, to spin up uh, API Gateway, we have this configuration file. What Teragrant is doing is that it's uh, uh, downloading a module and it's putting content inside of, inside of uh, this strange folder. So the, this folder now contains all source code of the module itself. So uh, this is exactly the point of Teragrant. Teragrant allows us to not think about uh, individual uh, files or modules or uh, somehow invoking this or even more complicated is that it does not uh, let us or doesn't ask us to think about outputs TF and variables TF. So this usually files where we have declaration of variables and outputs blocks. Uh, all we want to do is that we say, hey, uh, uh, Teragrant, please uh, get source code from this module folder or from this uh, module and uh, pass different variables to it. What it means for us is that Teragrant uh, creates this temporary folder where it will call Terraform. So one way of uh, debugging it uh, is actually uh, run, tera uh, run Teragrant and uh, then uh, if you don't know what's going on or Teragrant may be a little bit too slow for you right now, then you simply go to this folder and then you run Terraform and apply, for example. And if you run Terraform apply here and you make sure that you have correct credentials, you will look uh, or you will be doing very similar things as uh, um, Teragrant would be doing. With only exception is that uh, Teragrant understand how to get information uh, from uh, from uh, input blocks from this one and how to pass this information into uh, variables into Terraform and it will do this for you uh, transparently so you don't see this uh, in outputs you don't see any files generated for you uh, so this is a little bit uh, tricky uh, by default. I think uh, the command which uh, Dominic mentioned, uh, Teragrant debug, or we can specify here, I guess, uh, if we go here, 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 and if we run uh, debug, no, sorry, not to. no, I, d I don't have this uh, in, s in cache. So, but if we run uh, Teragrant uh, apply Teragrant debug, I, I guess this is it. Mm. Then uh, Teragrant will now generate a uh, file and it will tell you what's going to do. Uh, run this, it says run this command to replicate how Terraform was invoked. So it actually generated this uh, TFR JSON file and it put some some there. Uh, so this is pretty good way of uh, uh, using Teragrant for parts uh, where you want it to be, but then uh, use, some, uh, use some other tools to actually run Terraform, um, which is very seldom when you need to be honest, but still it is possible. Uh, is it possible to pipe some script output as an input for Teragrant? Uh, no, you need to create files physically. Uh, it does not accept... Uh, no, I don't think it accepts any uh, STD in content. So, no, probably not. Uh, what you can do is that now if you, if you run Teragrant and I run Teragrant apply, uh, it says that nothing has been created because I have already created it. Uh, what I can do is that I can see a lot of outputs here, right? So what I can do is that I can run Teragrant output and then again, I should wait a lot of time. Uh, it runs a lot of magic and then it shows me a lot of this output. That's pretty much uh, useless to, to do in automation. So if I now say, okay, I want to use this one, and again, 
it's outputting a lot of things for you here which uh, doesn't make sense for you and the last line is the one which you uh, cared about so as you can see you there is no easy way to skip all of this uh, output the only solution which i know about is that you have to pipe it into file and you have to put it let's say uh, what is it uh, output.txt so what's happening right now is actually useful well it takes some time but now we look into output and it doesn't work oh yeah right <laughs> uh, that's because of my script which is uh, is a local bin so now we have all of this output printed here like this is how it was working and all of this and then there is no real output which we wanted because it is already inside a file so uh, when you use teragrant without wrapper then it works as expected so yeah uh, this is one way how you can do this um, but uh, what I want to uh, talk specifically is about one of the most uh, beneficial feature of uh, Terragrant. Uh, and I I've been using it uh, quite long time until I figured out that I was using it uh, for bad reasons, I would say. So this feature is called uh, apply or and plan all and validate all. Uh, let's look into how it works. Okay, uh, I go to Terragrant. And I'm gonna to run apply all. Let's start with this comma. So what it says is that uh, it's gonna to uh, to uh, execute all dependencies because it figured out that uh, API gateway depend on Lambda, and uh, this dependency is outside of my current working directory. Uh, so do I want to say and this is still, I, 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 every time when I see this one, I'm confused. Like if you run uh, Terraform apply, you have to type yes only. It doesn't accept anything else. But here it says warning, if you say yes, Terragrant will make uh, changes in Lambda as well. And then yes or no. <laughs> so yes or no or yes. Well, I, I, I don't know what to type. I think I type yes every time. Um, so yes, I want to apply these changes. Then it figures out that uh, there are these dependencies. Uh, API Gateway depends on Lambda, and Lambda does not depend on anything. Uh, that's pretty much it. Yes, go and apply Terragrant, apply in all of this. So now it's doing the magic. It's going around and executing Terra, uh, Terraform apply. As you can see here, Terraform apply in all other folders. And that's uh, pretty much what I want. It executed changes inside of Lambda function. Mm, there was uh, nothing changed. Mm, but even if there would be anything changed, and let's say there would be new Lambda function I ran uh, produced, then uh, this change would happen before API Gateway need this value. So if you remember Terraform before 0 0.13, uh, where we didn't have depends on between modules, uh, this was extremely uh, painful to remember uh, the sequence of uh, commands to execute and uh, what has to be created first and second and uh, there were countless workarounds. So that's exactly when Terragrant was uh, shining. Terragrant simply take these uh, dependencies outside of uh, your code. Um, so here we have uh, execution of another layer which is uh, API Gateway there is nothing uh, changed here and then we see that everything is okay has finished successfully that's pretty much uh, flow how i want it to be okay now let's look into uh, two other commands another command uh, which is called plan i'm i'm as you, as you may see i'm talking about uh, teragrant quite positively now i'm not stumbling on, on any errors or i'm not uh, seeing anything what is far from logic so far, so good, I think. Until I run Terragrant plan all. Traditional question, this time let's type yes. It still work. Well, it works, but it even skip uh, asking another time. Anyway, so I said yes, because I want to run plan in all of these folders and I want to see how things are going. 
and then I see some plan, and then I see some other things, and then I see uh, API gateway applied. And uh, now I'm sitting and thinking like, hey, so how useful was this information? And the answer is no useful. Like absolutely no, there is no useful uh, thing in this information for me. And this is because if I have a large amount of resources dependent, uh, then this is just uh, text floating around. I have no clue where things are actually uh, coming from or how things are actually related. Like, honestly, I have no clue which layer this uh, code is actually uh, uh, affiliated with. Like in my case, uh, I deliberately select very small example, API gateway and Lambda. But if I would have 20 Lambda functions and five API gateways, uh, plan all is absolutely useless thing to do. Uh, additionally to this, uh, where plan all is uh, like is having a very hard time, is uh, in resolving dependencies which are not yet known. Because imagine the situation, you, you didn't create any infrastructure, or actually let's destroy it, right? I mean, Terragram destroy all also uh, exist. It's something what I don't think I run so often, but... Ah, okay, so if I run, let's destroy everything what I just created. And let's see how things go. So first it goes to delete Lambda function, I guess. No, it, it's deleting API gateway, of course. It just it's getting output from lambda function, but then it's deleting API gateway because it has dependencies. So cool, it will delete uh, API gateway, it's gone, and uh, now lambda function is deleting itself, so everything is fine. And now look at this uh, from a new user perspective. You go to this project, you go to, uh, mm, let's say you go to uh, okay, you go to API Gateway. This is a, like easy place. And you want to say, hey, uh, let's plan all of this. Okay, we can run plan or we can run plan all. For this specific example, it's not big difference. The difference uh, is that if you run plan all, it will also look in all dependencies uh, which are specified as dependency. So if you have a large list of dependencies, then it will also make sure to plan those too. Uh, but if you use just plan, it will only plan things which are related to this one. So uh, since I'm talking about uh, plan all, I'm going to say that yes, I want to plan all uh, things inside of my mm, Lambda function or inside of API Gateway, sorry. Cool, I run something, it tells me that, hey, now uh, Lambda function will be created, I'm really excited. And then it says like, hey, dependency Lambda just finished successfully and uh, everything is going to be all right. But then it fails because uh, uh, there is dependency uh, on an object which has not been yet created. And that's actually true because uh, code inside of my, inside of here, so this is uh, API gateway is pointing to Lambda output. And I don't know yet this Lambda function I ran. Uh, we, are, we may go to different workarounds here, uh, which will end up in uh, writing uh, another map here in dependency to mock a response from that uh, section. Uh, this is last thing which I want to do if I'm working with uh, infrastructure as code. Honestly, mocking something in order to see plan? Mm, no, not really. Uh, so yeah, plan all uh, is not useful uh, so much, um, primarily for this reason, is that it just tried to do happy pass and then it fails in most uh, cases. So plan all is highly uh, not recommended uh, by anyone, including developers. So the last command, which is uh, related to validate all, as you may assume, it does similar behavior, but uh, validate all at least uh, uh, going to work now in Lambda. And then again, it doesn't work 
inside of uh, API Gateway because there is no output and everything fall apart. Well, uh, to make this thing work, I need to write a lot of code somewhere inside of Terragrant HCL, in particular around these lines. Uh, I don't want to do this and uh, I was told that uh, it's about dryness, it's about simplicity. Uh, if I'm going to do this here, it's far from simplicity. Um, okay, so this was uh, pretty much uh, uh, like mm, things related to bad things in uh, plan all and validate all. So the only comment which makes sense to be used here is actually apply all and uh, I need to make very important uh, note or comment uh, that you don't want to run apply all uh, so uh, forcefully without clear understanding of what exactly is going to happen, right? You always want to see plan and then make sure that, okay, yes, it looks good. Now apply this one. Uh, if I run, let's say, if I now run apply apply all and again I ask or I was asked I said yes yes uh, I'm I'm crazy because I want to apply uh, my API gateway and lambda function and it's doing this so what's gonna to happen right now is that I have no control of what's gonna to happen I don't see my plan uh, there is no way for me to interact with it and say this should be applied but this layer should be skipped um, nothing so the only situation when apply all is safe to run is uh, when you have absolutely nothing to lose, which is usually like, hey, disaster recovery, we have absolutely nothing to lose, please spin up whatever you can. And then you can go to, uh, to this folder and run apply all. Uh, anyway, your fingers are crossed already that things will work. And here you are. Another situation when I, I use apply all is uh, when I spin up uh, my infrastructure in parallel environment, which is similar to disaster recovery process uh, in terms of I have nothing to lose and I have nothing yet created uh, anyway. So I'm going to, let's say, spin up infrastructure from previous release uh, and it works somehow. It does what I want. And then I'm going to pull the uh, latest version, which I want to put there. And I'm going to blindly run Terragrant apply, apply all again. And since it is running on isolated environment, which is not affecting any user or any other system, it's pretty good. So then I have more guarantee that this specific configuration uh, will uh, succeed inside of uh, other environments. So I think it is... Uh, like it's it's great by design honestly i was believing into these functions for a very long time and uh plan all was like mm, yeah it looks it looks good but uh in in theory in, in reality that's not uh, gonna to work validate all is uh even better but still mm, not so good so apply all is the only command which uh, which works um but uh, it's, it's rather risky to run it on production if you run it uh, so often. Okay, well, we are actually uh, one hour. So we are already for two hours. Oh my God. Uh, let's see. I have a few other things, um, small, like small things. And then I see I will take patterns and uh, actually uh, complaints and limitations and challenges uh on second part because now it just takes too long time so uh, talking about uh, atlantis and uh, and other interesting tools which can be uh, used so atlantis support for those who don't know what is atlantis atlantis is this one terraform pull request automation well it works natively with terragrant as well uh for me, honestly, it, it took a lot of time, a lot of efforts to figure out how to get it up and running. Uh, and then I just gave up because, uh, I mean, it, it works, but, uh, well, I didn't have a real project where I can uh, put this in action. So uh, it works, but uh, required some uh, magic a uh, long time ago. Now it is well documented and there are a lot of uh, people using it uh, with Terragrant as well. 
So Terragram uh, config. No, what is it? Um, mm, uh, one second, I, I forgot the name of the project, uh, which is related to Terragram. Uh, I use it in another repository. Hmm. Transit. Here is it. I remember the name of the company. So, well, what is this one? This one is actually generating Atlantis configs for Terragrant projects. Uh, I think it is really, really cool things. Uh, all right, yes, I'm still presenting. Oh my God. Right, so you didn't see, guys, what I was talking about. I talked about this Atlantis, um, which is cool, but required some, some uh, like, uh, a workaround. And uh, now I'm talking about Terragrant Atlantis config. This project allows uh, us to specify... Mm, mm, you are presenting, not browser. Well, no, I, I present my browser right now. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so uh, this uh, thing allows us to generate uh, YAML co config, which is required for Atlantis, uh, where it will understand uh, how your Terragram project is structured. Uh, I think it is pretty cool uh, in terms of uh, goal. Uh, when I was trying to use it with my, uh, with my uh, real uh, Terragram project and Atlantis, uh, I used to modify final YAML file still a little bit because it didn't include some details. And uh, I know I know that few people uh, have been in the same position, but anyway, it is great start, and the end result will be that once you run this command, uh, it will be uh, uh, it will have this YAML file, and it will also respect a lot of internals of uh, Terragram, uh, like it will understand uh, different dependencies or uh, where things change. Uh, it will also update them in another place and so on. So uh, I encourage you to check out uh, this documentation and the project itself. Uh, I think it is very, very much useful. Okay, question uh, by Konstantin. Uh, how in this case to manage the whole infra to make it consistent and make sure that you don't have any discrepancy? Well, uh, what, what I can do here is that um, yeah, I, I guess uh, the question is m related to, uh, to to this one. Uh, so yes, I, I said a little bit too much about uh, Terragram uh, working badly with uh, plan all and validate all, but apply all still works. So the way how, uh, how we can do this is that we can still run plan all, but uh, if it fails, it doesn't mean anything. Only if it succeeds, it gives us a, a kind of information that we have a lot of dependencies. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, what I what I think is uh, kind of very very important to understand is that uh, when you have uh, uh, infrastructure organized by environment by reusable modules then you have to make sure that you uh, spin up your infrastructure in parallel stack on your test environment and you verify it and you think it's it's okay then you can apply it to a production environment but uh, there is no easy way to run apply all and everything will be magically work on your production environment this is really a, a, a like big uh, m misunderstanding i would say i see okay let's one this is, I see a lot of cases in my company when something was changed and uh, wasn't applied or was applied from people's branch and was written by the, what, what is it? Uh, overwritten by the run from master branch. Well, this is typical uh, people problem. Uh, if you don't want people to run this infrastructure from their branch, then introduce any CI system uh, let that CI system to run this code for you. Uh, 
and uh, whatever they create from their branch should be overwritten from single source of truth, which is master branch. There is no uh, like no easy solution to people. Uh, so uh, I think it is actually quite uh, mm, quite easy to solve. You simply uh, re revoke access uh, from these people from environments where you don't want anything to be applied, but give them full flexibility to do whatever they want on limited environments. So they have fun and apply whatever they want on dev environment uh, or their personal environment. But then as soon as you want this to be streamlined, you actually enforce this to be applied on some sort of pipeline, on test, on staging, on production. Uh, otherwise, there is no way to uh, uh, to do this. Atlantis can certainly help with that, uh, as Max just said, is that it can, uh, it can work uh, on uh, auto-merge. There is auto-merge and uh, something else. And there is auto-merge. Mm, well, there is another auto-plan. Yeah, there is a feature called auto-plan, which will automatically invoke uh, TerraGround plan when something has changed in dependencies. Or it can also uh, merge uh, pull requests once they were applied or something like that. Um, uh, I, I'm not a big fan or, or big kind of expert uh, in, uh, in this flow, to be honest, because I, I still have like debatable uh, position most of the times. Uh, from one side, I want master to contain all information uh, and uh, this information should be real, uh, but at the same time, there can be a lot of uh, last minute pull requests because uh, you didn't have enough uh, certainty and you applied this code a little bit uh, wrong before. So then you apply a lot of small patches to it to make sure that it's actually working as expected. But uh, in most cases, you will have. Uh, very good uh, control if you simply uh, put all of your infrastructure uh, in code and you let your developers to just run uh, this f f like from master branch. So they can do whatever they want from their feature branch uh, if you use this, but uh, everything what you want to control, sorry, but you cannot, you cannot run yourself. Um, so Max also said once one person did the plan, others are locked from planning and applying. Yeah, so this is typical feature of Atlantis, really. Well, I can probably put this somewhere here. No, here. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, um, next uh, thing is going to be... Yeah, so Atlantis is one uh, way of executing TerraGround. Uh, I definitely want to go to uh, com complaints, limitations, and challenges, uh, but I will do this next time. So next time will be even more pessimistic uh, uh, edition of Terra Grant review. Uh, but uh, one thing uh, related to today's uh, session is that uh, pretty much I don't know any CI system right now who are taking Terra Grant seriously. It's, it's a little bit crazy. So, and every time when I talk to these companies and ask them like, well, thank you very much for support of Terraform, your company number 25, who say that Terraform is crazy and definitely important for them. But uh, what about support for Terragrand? And uh, none of these companies say like, oh yeah, we are aware that, uh, uh, let's say Terragrand, well, where is it? Terra Grant issues. Well, issues issues is for tomorrow or for next time. Uh, so they say like, oh yeah, we know that this project is used, uh, but uh, 4,300 stars on GitHub doesn't mean enough to us. So we are not going to make uh, Terra Grant uh, supported in our awesome CI system. And uh, what people have to do is that they have to run Atlantis or their own system, which they maintain themselves, uh, which is a little bit uh, uh, strange, I would say, but uh, I, I kind of understand them as well. Okay, 
do we have any other questions? Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to highlight a uh, comment by Sergei Vasilenko. So yes, Vasily, uh, or Sergei was so naive thinking Terragrant is just a framework, uh, nothing complicated. Uh, well, uh, if you want to use Terraform uh, framework, uh, you can do this. There are, if you go to Google and write Terraform framework, you will see find like TerraSpace, which has started recently uh, by, uh, by Bolt. Yeah, so. So this guy is actually developing pretty interesting things. Well, not so interesting. <laughs> zero forks. Well, I don't know why there is zero forks. Maybe people didn't understand how to write Ruby. But uh, anyway, uh, this is a real uh, Terraform framework. And there are a few other solutions to that. Uh, Terragrant started not as a framework. Terragrant uh, was supposed to help us with uh, removing boilerplate code, which typically variables, outputs, remote states, uh, passing variable and var files uh, in different ways and so on. And I think it is succeeding quite okay there. But uh, amount of uh, other extra features which you can read in documentation, uh, well, I'm, I'm just crazy. I'm, sh I'm sharing wrong screen and talking to, to you guys. <clears throat> so yeah, TerraSpace was a uh, framework. Uh, okay, so uh, I think uh, it's time for wrap up now. Uh, let me share another link to uh, another link to Zoom. So I I think it's gonna to be cool if we go there and if we uh, keep unofficial. Uh, really. Uh, think that we can go there and continue there. Well, uh, thanks, Sergey, for support. Uh, well, yeah, I hope uh, you didn't mean expiring, but uh, inspiring, because expiring uh, means that I will have to to change my stream when we have uh, uh, Terraform 014 uh, out. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't mind to go there <laughs> after correction, yeah. Okay, so let's see, uh, uh, yeah, let's join this uh, Zoom and uh, we continue there. Um, yeah, and the very last th thing which I want to say uh, is that this stream sponsor was N0, which I have somewhere here. Mm, Self-service cloud environments. So give it a try and see what you, what you guys think about it. <clears throat> because I know that a lot of people suddenly decided to worry about one more things which is cost it's crazy so many companies now say like cost is uh, what we worried about so here we go guys you can see how much your stuff actually cost okay uh, i don't think there are other questions right now in the youtube if there are any please uh, write them somewhere here mm, links i will put in description and uh, that's it see you see you in zoom <laughs>